Good morning and welcome to today's International Space Station update. Getting a look now inside the flight control room here at the Johnson Space Center in Texas. As controllers here on the ground continue to monitor systems on board the International Space Station. Leading the Orbit 2 team currently on console is Flight Director Ron Spencer. There on the right of your screen and to his right is Capcom Anna Fisher serving as the ground link between controllers here and astronauts currently on board the station. Orbiting complex is currently at an altitude of about 233 statute miles over Mexico heading southeasterly and will move out past the western coast of South America before moving out over the southern Atlantic. Currently on board, the crew of Expedition 30 is hard at work on another day full of experiments and maintenance work. They are led by NASA astronaut Dan Burbank, veteran of two shuttle missions, including the STS-106 mission back in 2000, which prepared the station for its first permanent crew. Joining him are Russian cosmonauts Anton Shkaplerov, there on your left, who is on his first space flight, and another Russian cosmonaut, Anatoly Ivanishin, also his first space flight. They will be joined later in December by the remainder of the Expedition 30 crew, which is comprised of NASA astronaut Don Pettit, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Konyanko, and European astronaut Andrei Kuipers. Crew awoke today at about midnight time central and then did some morning prep work before their daily planning conference where they discussed the day's items with controllers around the world. We did not locate the Baca, but the crew is also doing an emergency egress drill today. This drill will assist them with the familiarization with the location of different emergency equipment, including the hatches and passageways on board the complex and will familiarize them with the emergency evacuation route. Commander Burbank started his day with reaction self-test. That's done to study if any sleep deprivation is affecting his performance on board the station and as part of an ongoing research experiment. He's also doing some work with the Integrated Cardiovascular Ambulatory Monitor Monitoring System, getting that set up and then affixing it to his chest. And then this experiment will determine how much cardiac atrophy occurs during his spaceflight and how fast it develops. This is due to that microgravity environment that the astronauts are subject to during their expeditions. Later in the day, he did some monthly inspection work on the treadmill too, prior to exercising on that treadmill. The astronauts getting about two hours of exercise in each day, again to combat the effects of that microgravity environment. Later, he'll do some water testing on the water processing assembly, taking some samples from the to total organic carbon analyzer sample hose, testing for any particulates inside the water that could become potentially hazardous if they're allowed to build up, and then doing some power work on the Japanese external segment's remote control arm. That is in anticipation of next week's ground control demonstration and then just a few minutes ago, Dan Burbank participated in a public affairs event with Bay News 9 in Florida, answering some questions and talking with the reporter about the future of spaceflight and his activities currently on board the station. Then later on in the day, he'll get some more workout time in on the ARED device, followed by a journal's entry, which is part of an experiment designed to see how isolation, confinement, and the other stressors of spaceflight can affect crew health and morale. His crewmate Anton Kaplarov ended his 24-hour electrocardiogram experiment that he began yesterday, studying the heart functions over a day's time. He then did an on-orbit hearing assessment, followed by the pneumocard experiment, which helps to understand the mechanisms of adapting the cardiorespiratory system to spaceflight conditions. He then got some exercise on the Tevis treadmill, followed by some maintenance to the Russian coolant system, and then some cargo transfer activities from the 45 Progress vehicle, that is the cargo vehicle that resupplied the station. And then following that, he did some update work on the station's inventory management system, 
and then closing out his day will be some more exercise. Then the third member of the Expedition 30 crew currently on orbit, Anatoly Ivanishin, began his day with some leak checks on one of the Russian coolant systems and then started up his own 24-hour electrocardiogram experiment. He then moved on to do some preventative maintenance on the ventilation system inside the Zvezda module, also known as the Russian service module, for doing some exercise activities and also doing an on-orbit hearing test. He then moved on to work on the interactions experiment, which are weekly questionnaires that help identify and define important interpersonal factors that may impact the performance of the crew and ground support personnel during these ISS expeditions. The crew will end their day with a second daily planning conference going over the day's activities and any get-ahead work that they need to do for tomorrow before moving into pre-sleep where they do some wrap-up work. And then the crew's sleep period is currently scheduled at 3.30 p.m. Central Time today.